Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Matt Skonicky. I'm going to go through a brief introduction to how to get yourself started by creating 3D renders out of Maya for stereoscopic 3D VR. First thing is to think first, uh, the materials that you will need. You will need Autodesk Maya 2017, which includes Arnold for free. Um, if you are a teacher or a uh, student like myself, you can actually get this for free with your EDU uh, email and just registering what school you go to, or you can get a 15 day trial offer for it. Uh, so there you go. Um, you also need a third-party plugin it's called Dome Master 3D plugin for VR camera renders. There is a spherical camera that you can render with Arnold. Arnold by default, if you look at the cameras in Arnold, it says you can switch it to spherical, which is the type of camera we render VR with. But that's not going to do it because Dome Master was specifically designed for the proper um, rendering for left right eye, for proper uh, lack of the dis uh, disparity issues and so forth and errors in the proper way VR should be rendered for um, basically unwrapping a dome that has proper left and right eye registration. So it's a per uh, region based render and it will be the best result for what you need. So definitely stick with this. Okay, we'll talk about where to get that. You also need the spatial media metadata injector. This is free. What it does is it takes your final QuickTime quick uh, movie deliverable and injects the metadata to assign it to either one of two choices, whether it's just a VR flat circle uh, sphere imagery or if it's stereoscopic VR, which means there's a left and a right eye, so two separate renders. Uh, we we'll also need a program, edited, uh, sort of like an image manipulation program, such as Photoshop, After Effects, or Nuke. We're going to use Nuke to conform that what's considered a, a top-bottom stereoscopic VR render, which is just basically stacking our two different camera renders. Remember, we're rendering a left and a right eye. We're making two movies, basically. Um, and you'll need a YouTube account to upload your video. And then to actually view the... Uh, actual uh, video, you can see single frame or uh, series, uh, single camera uh, VR, which you can kind of manipulate with your mouse, which we're going to do to show inside of Chrome. But to view the VR, just go to Best Buy, buy a Google Cardboard for 10 bucks, or if you want to spend more money, get these guys or get Gear VR. And you can use your iPhone and put it in a Google Cardboard to actually see the stereoscopic effect and start judging, uh, you know, the, the quality of your work and so forth. So with that, let's go ahead and jump in to a couple of things I want to talk about before we get started. One, uh, you are going to be rendering a lat long. Just like how you unwrap the map of the Earth, it's going to be a 2 to 1 ratio, so twice as long, and this is the height. And those resolutions are usually 4096 by 2048 or 2048 by 1024. Um, you cannot render any other crazy resolution, though. those are your options, okay? That's the kind of format we're creating, because this gets wrapped into a sphere, and that's how you get the VR experience, looking around 360. It's also important to notice that when we're rendering, we use Dome Master because it does a great job of sort of calculating the best results for uh, the lack of uh, vertical disparity. If you've ever worked in stereoscopic workflow, which is the 3D glass stuff, which everybody seems to hate, um, that stuff has come back to haunt you in VR as for pre-rendered, or uh, live action footage. Um, if you're doing engine-based VR, where it's live, you don't have to worry about that if you're using a game engine. But when you're talking about pre-rendered or pre-shot with such systems, say, as the Jaunt VR, where it takes multiple arrays of uh, cameras for a good reason, because every pixel has to be overlapped at least uh, twice by two cameras, in order for the computer software, such as Kara VR, which is a plugin for Nuke, to create um, a stereo, synthetic stereoscopic left and right eye via the distance of your eyes, which are a couple centimeters um, and so forth. So that's why they record with these crazy camera array systems. It's not overkill, they just need the overlap of all the different um, items. A flaw of shooting with stuff like this is the fact that your poles, the North Pole and the South Pole, will lose the 3D effect simply because of the way that 3D and the poles sort of meet and sort of uh, squish to a center and that left and right disparity kind of goes away. So there is a flaw in pre-rendered or I should say shot VR with live action in the sense that your poles, your top and your bottom poles will have a lessened or at least zero at the tips, uh, at the tip of the poles, uh, 3D effects. So it's something to be aware of. It's just a technicality that we haven't solved yet and I don't think we will ever solve. We'll see. 
Uh, Google Cardboard, I mentioned before, is something you can download or you can buy at Best Buy for 10 bucks. I, I highly recommend getting like a $30 one they have there, which actually has a strap that can go around your, your eyes. This is a cheap, cheap system, but this is how you would plug it, and this is how you're eventually going to see it via YouTube. Okay, so you're going to go to uh, andrewwazildem.com, and he has a, uh, if you just look up the keyword search, Dome Master 3D, he has this awesome plugin, which is basically a camera. You're going to download Experimental Dome Master 3D 2.1 beta release for Maya 2017. It is a beta, but it works fine. Uh, Windows or Mac, and go ahead and install it, and you will, once you install it, you will actually get a, uh, a whole uh, system. I'll go ahead and show you this really quick. If you go to your applications, you will find Dome Master 3D, which is right here. And you will see a folder in here for Arnold, and I believe, I don't know where I put it, but it's, it's somewhere in here. I think it's under modules. You have this Arnold Dome, Dome, Dome Master 3D. You want to copy this Okay, and we're going to put it somewhere. Where are we going to put it? Well, you're going to go ahead and go to your Go menu, and you're going to hold down Alt and Command to open up your library, which is your hidden folder. And within the library, you're going to go to the Preferences. So Library, Preferences. And then you're going to go to Autodesk Maya, the version of Maya, in our case 2017. And you're going to go into modules, and you will you will see a Dome Master 3D mod here, but you will paste that Arnold Dome Master 3D in there. It has to be in there, or it will not work. It'll error out inside of Maya. All right, so let's jump into Maya real quick. Here is Maya. Here is my scene, and you're going to go ahead and notice you'll see a pull-down window here, Arnold Dome Master 3D. You're going to go ahead and say, create a lat-long stereo camera. If you just don't, if you want to shoot just uh, a single um, <clears throat> basic image. Uh, render, uh, you can just use lat long camera. But if you're doing stereo, you want the stereo camera. And if you go ahead and see, I went ahead and created a AI sky dome light. So you can go under Arnold, lights, sky dome light. All the materials are assigned to an AI standard material, which has got to be an Arnold material. Remember, everything has to be Arnold if you're rendering with Arnold. And the actual camera itself comes in looking like this. So let's go ahead and frame it up. Hit F to frame it. And it looks like three cameras, and it's orientated looking up. Now, you can't really bother even looking at this image because it's going to render a spherical image. It's going to capture a spherical environment. What you can sort of judge is the distance between these, uh, these two eyeballs. So you're, you're not rendering this center camera. It's just there for example. You're rendering this camera and this camera spherically in a very interesting stitch render uh, that it figures out on its own. The distance between these two cameras, if you have too much of a 3D effect, when you look at your render and your eyes are hurting, you can actually scale this down and, and kind of separate the, uh, and like kind of change the distance between the two left eye and the right eye. See, it's smaller now. It'll lessen the 3D effect, will give you less of a headache, okay? There is an option in here as far as interocular separa interaxial separation, which is the distance between the left and the right eye, but it seems to be, um, I'm not sure if you can adjust it here or whatever, but honestly, I just prefer just to scale this in and out and render the stuff out, see how it looks, and then redo it and try it out. It's a real tricky process, guys. This stuff is still in its infancy right now, the whole process. Um, and I've also, under my Render Globals, created an environment, environment tab, or an Arnold AI Sky, I'll just set to blue. In my commons, I went ahead and set this to running for the file, name.number.extension. I'm rendering it to frames 1 to 200. And I got my render camera set up to Arnold Latlong's camera stereo pair. It's going to render two folders with two sequences that will be 200 frames long. So you see start frame and end frame 200. Your width and height has to be a lat long resolution. So twice as long resolution, you see device aspect ratio is set to 2 to 1. And it's 2048 by 1024 or 4096 by 2048 would be a highly recommended uh, resolution. Anything? Outside of that, you'll actually lose data, so don't do anything but a lat-long resolution, which is a 2 to 1 resolution ratio. Okay. So with that said, um, you can go ahead and render this out. I'll go ahead and just show you the animation I did of the camera. So I'll go ahead and just hit F to frame these guys up. So it starts at this end of the scene and makes its way to the center. So um, it's going to be a little bit too much disparity 
um, I think here because we're so close to everything here the left and the right eye will be so different that my eye is not gonna be able to take it so I will probably have to re-render this and bring my uh, size of my cameras down or get further away from this object because it's just too close that's just the way it is okay so I'm gonna go up under rendering render batch render and render out the sequence and with that let's go ahead and see what we got all right so under my Maya documents Maya projects default images you can see I have a left and a right eye with a frame range of 1 to 200. So you can see here, here's the frame, here's the animation. You can see it looks like an unwrapped map of the Earth, Earth right? So it has this kind of warpy effect and so forth. So with that, we're going to go jump into Nuke and play around. So I'll go ahead and show you what you eventually are going to create is this, a 2048 by 2048, a perfect square image with the left eye at the top and the right eye at the bottom. So here's our renders. I'll go ahead and just look through one of them. It's a 2048 by 1024 render. And I'll go ahead and just show you what it looks like. Pretty exciting, right? All right, so with that, I went ahead and reformatted with a reformat node, which makes it reformat to the 2K resolution. And then I transformed it up 512 units. And then I did the same thing for the other camera, or the other eye, the right eye, and transformed it down. And then I just merged them together, so the top, the top and the bottom. You can do this in After Effects or whatever program you want. Just make sure it's a perfect square, 2048 by 2048 render. And then I write this out as an MPEG-4 or a QuickTime, whatever, your frame range. And then I went ahead and rendered it out with 600 frames. Now, 600 frames, what I did was, in my read node, I set this to bounce. So that if it goes past the 200 frame range, it just reverses the footage and then reverses back. For infinity so I only want I want to render a lot more frames I know it's an error in using uh, in YouTube if you don't have more than like I think you have to have at least a hundred frames for this to work or else it'll error out on your um, Google Cardboard or iPhone so I've written those out let's go ahead and take a look at the file so here it is as you can see um, and it's looking really good so it bounces back and forth blah 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 now you're going to go ahead, and if you look at the bottom, I have a link to this. You want to use this thing called a spatial media injector, okay? Now I've already done a conversion here, so I think I'll just close it and open it up again here so you can see it, what happens. Let me load this up. This is a free little metadata injector. This will basically tell, embed metadata or data into our actual QuickTime, so it lets YouTube know this is a 360 video. So I'm going to go ahead and open up my file. In this case, it's my travel.mpeg4. And I have a couple choices. Um, if I only had a render that was 2048 by 1024, I would actually just um, leave this as a 360 video that doesn't have a left and right eye, okay? And then it would be fine. You can still look at it in your Google Cardboard, but you won't have a 3D effect. But because I have a left and right eye stacked, top and bottom, I'm gonna click on this. And if I have audio that has uh, ACN or uh, SN3D, um, I could click here and that'll basically say that the audio is set up for that so that when I move my uh, visor around the shift of, from my left and right uh, headphone jacks will, will, will change and that's that's a whole that's a whole other story but we're not going to get into that. So I'm going to inject the metadata and it'll change the name to travel injected. I'll go ahead and hit save. It will create a file that is called saving uh, travel injected mpeg4. You will upload this to YouTube without any questions asked about 360 whatsoever. You don't have to say, hey, this is a 360 file. Just upload it. The metadata will do the work for you. And let's go ahead and take a look at it inside of YouTube. Now, we are looking at this on Google Chrome, which is recommended. Don't use Safari or anything else. You can already see it kind of recognizes it as 3D. Inside of Google Chrome, I can change the quality all the way up to whatever resolution I feel I need. And I can go ahead and hit play and now we're looking at it in Google Chrome. Um, now if you had your uh, Google Cardboard or whatever VR system, you'll have a little, uh, little icon here that looks like uh, goggles. You're going to click on that. It's going to split it into two views, left and right eye. You're going to put your iPhone or whatever your phone you have into your Google Cardboard and watch it in 3D through the visor. Um, so just be aware of that. You can see it recognizes it as left and right eye as I scrub. See a little picture. But in this case, we can't look at 3D on a regular LCD screen. 
I want you to be aware of a couple things. One, the 3D is going to be too intense for objects really close to me, so I'm going to have to do something about that. Either move my camera further away from this uh, device or uh, decrease that scale of my camera I showed you earlier to decrease the 3D effect. Again, you've got to make a judgment call on this, and that's just how it's always been using stereoscopic workflow before there was VR. So again, it's just a really cool thing. Uh, one thing I want you to be aware of is this sort of flaw that comes with the render, which is objects that are very close. You can see at the poles, you get this kind of squeezed in, uh, like, like swirly effect here. Go to the pole here, not so noticeable because it's white up there. But notice as I get further away from something, the effect kind of goes away. It's not as dramatic as it's something further away. So distance does make a, a, a call on all this, so be aware of that. Also, if you have a black line like this in here, it could be the fact that if you go into your renders, you can see here inside a nuke, I have an extra, extra, extra pixel on the left side and the right side. So I'm going to have to probably even manually squeeze that overlap uh, in by extending the transform, translate width, or whatever, so that I don't get that black line. Because what this does is it wraps around onto a sphere. So that's it. I hope this helps you out. If you have any questions, just email me at mskonicky at gmail.com. And happy VR uh, workflow.